Okay, um, we're starting to assemble. Everything has already been fitted. The motor mount's already done. Uh, the engine is going to sit exactly as it is sitting right now. Um, and we're going to uh, basically build this thing the way that it should be built for maximum efficiency. Maximum efficiency both for the intercooler and for the radiator. The old coolers don't matter because they have their own bulk load. Um, most people end up putting, in most applications, the intercooler in the very front of the car. Um, and that's really the way it should be done because you, you want the intercooler to have the maximum uh, impact of air to make it most efficient. Um, but the way that the front bumper on the RX-8 is designed, they block off 70% of the air inlet of the car and in reality all the air comes in through this stuff right here so like I said before we're going to inv invert the location of the intercooler and the radiator we're going to put the radiator up in the very front so it has at the maximum amount of impact air and heat exchange because there's going to be a lot of guys that are going to want to squeeze some real power out of these things so we're going through the headache of doing this we're going to do it correctly we're going to do it right so that it's, it's a truly state-of-the-art application um, and we're going to place the inner open up the grill place the inner cooler of the rather the radiator where it should go and have a separate entrance on the bottom of the bumper for the inner cooler uh, basically invert the positions but that is how it is it how it gets maximum efficiency both for the radiator and for the inner Obviously, we're going to, just like the radiator gets trapped with air underneath the hood, um, same thing's going to happen here. Um, probably going to end up putting some fans on the inner cooler, or at least one of them, to give it even more uh, efficiency. I'll cross that bridge when I get there, but the placement is going to be exactly like that. It'll be um, somewhat of a custom-made inner cooler because we're going to have the... Uh, in the tank on the bottom, out that tank on the top, and the tank is gonna have a hump, a hump right here going straight into the fly-by-wire throttle body, making it a very, very clean installation with its own ductwork coming up to it. And then, you know, uh, we're gonna have a vented hood to get the heat out. And uh, with those considerations made, this is going to be a platform that um, will be just as good for the average guy who just wants a daily driver with, you know, 300 horsepower or somebody who wants to, you know, squeeze 600 horsepower at the end, you know? The, 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 the logic behind the build is going to be correct for maximum power. That'll hold the bumper on for us. That'll all 
also, since this is not gonna be here and it's going to be here, that'll also give us room to have a nice duct for the air filter to come up over and sit right here. They should employ me in Japan, bro. <laughs> Everybody says that. I should go work for Mazda, teach them how to build these cars right. We should pull it more from the bottom. Bring it down, let's take the bumper off. And we're going to modify the bumper stop so that we can hang the radiator there. And we're also going to take out the grill for right now so that we can have the placement of the radiator exactly how we want. Bring it down! You guys start removing this grill. Got a, got a thing here. Got, you know, that should pop right off. That's your type of shit, Richard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are you find? Was it like clips? Okay. Now we need to take the bumper um, stop out and do some surgery. You know, if that, if that uh, power steering wouldn't be so big and fat and where it sits. Yeah. There's room in there for a six rotor. Yeah. Six rotor. Yeah, you know they make one. <laughs> Turbo Yoda. <laughs> really nice. Exactly how I envision. You know, supposedly, you know, uh, Pulse Performance? Uh, Pulse, yeah. Supposedly, you send them a 13B engine for 20 grand, and they supply you with a four wheel. Like that's that's, the, that's, the, that's the origin, at least the, the, the yeah. essential cap. No, they, they, they advertise that. But if you, if you do a little bit of search on the, uh, on the internet, 
by the time everything is set and done, intake manifold, uh, you know, fuel injection, this, that, and the other, you're up in the $65,000 range. Okay, now let's take this off. This? Yep, we gotta do some surgery. Pulse Performance are the guys that build Mad Mike's car. Yeah. Right. And supposedly, uh, Hack Performance is supposed to be making a, like a, a tour in America. You know, Hack Performance. They announced it at uh, the Yeah, you'd have to put some nuts under it if you want to put that yeah. back. Hey. Way, whether they choose to leave the fucking radiator like it is, or, or do it the way that I'm doing, this is going to fit exactly where it's at. Very simple. Very, very, very simple. We will use that too. If you move the electronics box, computer box, is the wiring harness going to have to be? Yeah, man, it, it just moves beautiful. No, but I'm oh, saying. Oh, you mean the factory wiring harness? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, that may be a problem. We'll make a. I'm sure that I can have a right wire somewhere like that, make a patch. Yeah. It's more work, I'm just... Yeah, I understand. I understand we could keep it in the same place, it'd be better, right? Well, regardless, you know, if you leave the radiator and all that stuff here, um... The plumbing for the inner cooler is going to be... Uh, whore. Not that it can't be done, but what I'm mainly concerned is to have a, a, a real nice gooseneck going to the turbocharger with a proper air filter. That's fine. Now, all you gotta take it, you gotta fill it, pull it out, and then pop it. Sure that bumper doesn't fall off. This is the idea. Have the radiator right here getting all the fresh air. Then have a duct coming like this to meet the top of the inner cooler. Have the bottom plastic piece come straight to seal the bottom and also meet the inner cooler. So the, 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 the top of the duct of the intercooler is going to act as the outlet to the radiator. That's all the Porsches out. And then the bottom is going to go straight into the intercooler. And we've got here almost a foot and a half space to work with. I'm going to continue moving forward with the setup. This is my favorite. This is how I want to do it. Um, 
this is for, this is certainly not for um, someone who's going to buy a kit and they're going to do it themselves. So, um, if somebody wants to buy a turnkey car from me, then this is how it's going to get done. If they want to do it with the radiator in its original location and uh, have an air separator tank and all that plastic crap that they have up here in the front, it's their choice. We're selling a kit to bolt the, as we've said it a million times in all the videos, the third gen into the transmission, direct bolt, plug and play. They can go ahead and do the installation however they wish to do the installation. For as far as the kit is concerned, with manifolds and uh, wiring harness and all that, that's all going to be plug and play. That's what most cars want. Somebody wants to have us do a turnkey car, which there already are people that are saying, we're going to buy everything as you do it. This is the way it's going to be done. Um, far more efficient. As you can see right here, the radiator fits exactly in the place where it should go, maximum efficiency, and this cavity here, which is what used to feed air to the radiator, how the car came, is going to feed air to the intercooler, computer, everything on here, and we still got a foot and a half left for packaging, whatever the hell I want to put in there, you know? And again, it goes back to another, another statement that I said in one of the other videos, when we were doing the intercooler piping with the... Um, uh, placement and piping with the uh, Miata for maximum recovery of air density and heat exchange you want to have as much area as much space between the intercooler and the radiator whether it's like this or whether it's like this it makes no difference to me what I'm shooting for is maximum efficiency of both components and when you have all the stuff in front of the radiator that's when you get issues of keep, keeping the engine cool because the radiator loses efficiency with air going through the intercooler and gets, gets smacked in the face with an, a, a, a block of air when the air conditioning condenser, when you got the AC on, that condenser is generating heat. So that's not gonna happen here. Will the AC be as cold? Just as cold because, because the uh, the uh, intercooler, or I'm sorry, the condenser core is going to go in front of the intercooler, but by a big distance. So it is going to have plenty of opportunity to dissipate its heat, and at the same time, it's not going to be blocked by an intercooler. So everything is going to work more efficient. Everything is going to have a direct, straight shot of fresh air. Nothing blocking nothing. I mean, we got the space. We might as well take advantage of it. I mean, there's got to be cutting involved, always. Yeah. Are you wearing one of his shirts there? <laughs> yeah, well, you know, he's going to be one of the main contributors to, um, to the project. So, might as well give him a plug. Yeah. Actually, this is going to end up exactly in the same spot.
Um, can somebody hold that on both sides? You might just get lucky with the hood not hitting that. Well, it has that piece that's sticking out. You always cut a hole in it. I can always bring bring the radiator down a little bit and put this out on this side. It's yeah. very, very, very nice. Doesn't hit. Let's take it up. I'm marking the white up. No, it's not. We're good right now. Marking up shit. The radiator can still come down. to the cap. Well, but I mean, if we wanted to bring it down, we can bring it down. There's plenty of space there. That's enough. That's enough. Not only that, but that uh, fairing that I cut out, all I got to do is, all we have to do is make that little hole a little bit bigger to allow the cap to drop. Right. right. We'll include in the kit a little paper template. <laughs> gotta, gotta not forget that one. That one's gonna be easy to forget. <laughs> Just so that they could trace exactly how it's gonna be cut. I mean, this is gonna be pre digested. Yeah. Alright. Now that, guys, is a work of art. And look at all the room that's in here. <laughs> I ain't lying. It's that much. It's a pretty long. That's a good foot and a half. You put whatever the hell you want, man. Could have a second trunk. <laughs> exactly how I envisioned it. Couldn't be easy. You make up the core ever so slightly, maybe an inch, whatever I need. I already found the core that I need. Treadstone's got it. It's to allow the bottom radiator hose to go from there right through there. Bink! Top radiator hose exactly through on that side. And we're going to have all the room in the world to package an air, con an air, con air conditioner in that corner. And the computer box is going to go right there. You know, we'll run, we'll run our, our oil cooler lines through here. We'll hang uh, a, a nice um, condenser for the air conditioner in here. Plenty of space. Electric fans on the, uh, on the um, radiator. We could actually have some pusher fans on the intercooler if we want. I mean, we can get crazy. We got room for whatever the hell we want to do here. Yeah, two and a half feet. Two and a half feet? Two and a half feet. Cubic feet. There's your engine mount. We can even put the stupid grill back on if we don't make our own. Yeah, we get some wire for that. Keep the stones off it. Maximum efficiency. Well, Rich, you took a gamble on the radiator. <laughs> Came out good. I told you what we needed. This is just so sweet. That's where, it, that's where it comes. On every hood. It's... Let me have that tape. Measuring tape. 
<sighs> oh, bro. This is just too good. It's on the hood edge. From the radiator, we got 17 inches. This is gonna be a kid. Hold on to that. 17 inches is right there. Your vents start earlier than that. Any hood that's vented starts about here. Yeah. So if we have a solid inch and a half between the radiator cap yeah. and the hood. I thought we were gonna hit. All right, my hood. Okay. With right wire to make a uh, you know uh, a patch a patch uh, harness where the other one ends here. We'll have to look at it. I don't even know what the harness looks like. And just come around, boom, boom. That can be in volume. That can be more than 100 bucks. He died on my silver car, but I never got around to it. I'll bring it in tomorrow, but I'm, tomorrow I'm not gonna stay long because I got a Christmas shot. Turbocharger and put it in place. See if I have to modify the motor mount at all um, for the downpipe. Um, that's one thing we haven't done. It's smart what we gotta do with the motor mount. This is where the mount is gonna have the circle, the, the, the base. And this is the edge of the end there. So I'll make a nice, um, very gentle, high radius curve to come out like that, like this, and round the corners off. Make it elegant looking. Manny, grab that evaporator so I'm gonna get damaged. Point, point, point to the light over here. Right, right under his feet. Grab right, that. Right feet back, right? Yeah, so it doesn't get damaged. Bet you didn't think that radiator was gonna feel like that. Nah, it's, but even the neck where it comes out is perfect. Oh. I'm happy. Yeah, well done. And it's, there's no clutter, man. That's the beauty about it, there's no clutter. You pop you pop the hood of an RX-8 and it's just, you know, clutter everywhere. So much so that they have to cover it up. Right. Keep it simple. Kiss, keep it simple. Simple and clean. thing that actually mates together without having to reinvent the wheel is the transmission to the to the engine wheel. Everything else has to be on turbo race cars, but I came up with this layout my third generation because I wanted a massive intercooler there and for the three rotor that gets hot I want a, a you know the, 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 the radiator getting as much impact there as possible and then on top of that I have that supercharger that the plumbing to the intercooler is complex. So, you know, it's just a matter of ducting. These here, we're, we're going to make out of Durlin. We slide them in and uh, figure out the correct height. <laughs> nice. Look how beautiful that came out. Clean. Now what we gotta do is I'll draw how far back we gotta go. Actually what I'm gonna do is move them in so that I can send a punch in. And uh, it's connected to the oil pan? Yep. That's how third gens are. allow me to 
to drift. Will you be able to use the uh, stock radiator with the kit if you want? Or? Yeah, you can. Um, obviously, it sits down here way out of the way. Um, and then you can put a, you know, you can put a, an intercooler in the front, which is a conventional way of doing it. I'm choosing a different route for many, many, many re different reasons. These engines are known to run hot. All rotary engines are known to run hot. So we have so much space in front of the engine that what I'm choosing to do in this project is to do the uh, arrangement of, of intercooler and radiator the way that we do it on race cars, being that the nose of the car, the actual opening for the radiator is three quarters of the way closed. So realistically speaking, all the air that enters the radiator, condenser, and intercooler come in from the bottom. So my plan is to use the bottom duct to feed the intercooler, just like we do on race cars, and use the top duct to feed the radiator. Giving the radiator top priority making sure that the engine runs dead cold. And the intercooler is gonna have its own duct going into it under high pressure. Um, again, this is how we do it on race cars. So um, this is not, not nowhere gonna be near race car performance, but since we're, since we're re-engineering everything, we might as well do it state of the art. Okay, this is just a mount it's for, for the, oil. the oil cooler lines. Yeah. We're going to end up rerouting that anyway, so... Um, let's just take it off altogether. And all this put it back on. Do me a favor, Manny, break this nut so we can have it out of the way and then I can just move it. You know, the more I think about it, the more they went far out of their way right. to make life complicated. Yeah. Could have been so much simpler. 